Culture or a microwave. Well, there's my G on the CSE. Billy J getting down with the VBA. Oh my, it's doing Excel time. Stand by, it's doing Excel time. Mama, it's doing Excel time. Hey, hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. This is our episode 192, add 500 to a single cell that says 123, 124, 125. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike German from Excel is Fun. Let's get started. Uh, Mike, here is a great one. This was a comment on our uh, Dueling Excel podcast from last week. Uh, Siv uh, says, in one cell, he has 700, comma, 701, 702, 703, 704, 705, and you want to add 500 to those. So in other words, it'd be in at one cell, 1200, 1201, 1202, 1203, 1204, 1205. And I can think of a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, and my way, uh, just like the theme song says, I'm gonna go VBA. And actually it's not my VBA, it's Brad Yunt's VBA. This is from my episode 2317, Brad, uh, lent me this three line code and I'm going to reuse that splitter code here. So what I do is I switch over to VBA with Alt F11 and then insert module and on that module I'm going to put this simple little three line UDF function splitter text is string delimiter is string and that's going to return a variant splitter is equal to the split that's a function in VBA of text by the delimiter and function really really simple all right so if we come back here and I say equal splitter of this original text by the comma. And we could have hard coded the comma in that uh, UDF, I guess. Check this out. It gives me a horizontal array, which is perfect. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that splitter and I'm going to say plus whatever is in this cell here. I'll press F4 and check that out. It adds 500 to all of those items. But we want that all back in one cell. So we're going to come here and say equal text join, text join. Uh, the delimiter is going to be a comma. Uh, ignore empty. Sure, let's, I don't think we're going to have any em empty, but in case we do, yes. And then the splitter and enter like that. Perfect. Just copy that down, copy that down. And if for some weird reason we had different numbers here, uh, so let's do equal ran between one comma seven times a hundred. Uh, all we would have to do is take the dollar signs out. The C8 could just become C8 like that. Copy that down. And now we are adding to the 1190, adding 700. Check that out. Great way to go if you're allowed to use VBA. Mike, let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Ding, ding, ding. VBA wins. Can you believe it? There's a split function. If only we had that in the worksheet. VBA gets the point for this duel. Now, all of you fans of the Excel is Fun channel, you got to do me a favor. In the channel section of my channel, there's the number one Excel video guy in the history of the world. Yes, MrExcel.com. You got to go to his website. Bill Mr. Excel Jellen is the original Excel video guy posting videos at iTunes and a few older videos from the year 2006 at YouTube. You got to go and subscribe and click that bell. We got to pump them up to 100,000 subscribers. So go and subscribe and then enjoy lots of historic Excel awesomeness. Now, anytime we do something like this, it depends on what the pattern and the data is. Now, I assume that he just gave this example quick, started at a number, adding one, and all the numbers have the same number of characters. If that's the pattern, then all we need to do is do a sequence Start at 1444, add 1 to that to get each one of these into that sequence of number. Then we add this amount and join them. The only trick is we need to know how many numbers there are. Inside of sequence, that little construction there tells us how many commas there are, plus 1. So if I hit F9, that means there's 9. That's how many rows we want. And then the starting position is, well, I'm extracting that first number. And the step is add 1. And then to that sequence, 
F9, we simply add whatever the amount is and join. But of course, those aren't safe assumptions. There might be different numbers in here. They might be different lengths. So I want to use the let function to try and create this little construction. Mid is going to look over here. And the only tricky part is how in the world for start number do I generate an array of all of the starting positions, 1, 6, 11, and so on. And again, these have a uniform increment, but we're going to assume that that's not the case. And then how do I create the array for number of characters to extract for each starting point? Now I'm going to use the function let, which allows us to define variables and then use those variables throughout the formula. There's the variable name. There's the cell. Number of characters is the name of a variable. We'll count how many characters are in the cell. 44 are in the first one. There's the name of the third variable. Sequence will give us the number 1 to 44. Now the next variable is going to be comma error. But before we get to that actual calculation, we first need to extract every single character and analyze it to see if it's a comma. Now I'm going to just look and see what this evaluates to by taking the variable name and putting it as the final calculation. When I hit Enter, you can see that we extracted it. However, since I ultimately need the starting positions of the numbers, I'm going to add a comma to the front of it. So in double quotes a comma, and then join it to whatever's in the cell. And that way now I have a marker for the first position and the sixth position. F2, I want to get an error where there are commas or text. So I add 0. The 0 will be added to the numbers, but I'll get an error where there are commas. And I want a true there, so I'm going to use the is error function. What we're doing here is we're building it one step at a time and seeing what it evaluates to. And there we go. Now we have a marker, comma, comma, comma. Now the fifth variable is going to be comma position. And watch this. I'm going to take the filter function, and we're going to filter the sequence 1 to 44, comma, and then will be comma error. So that has the pattern of trues and falses. And then at the end, we can paste the variable we just created, close parentheses, and see what it evaluates to. Oops, I left this one in. <laughs> I do that a lot. I'm going to take that out now. That's the array of starting positions for mid. Now the hard part is getting the difference between 6 and 1, 11 and 6. And here's how I would do it if I was using worksheet formulas. I take everything with one cell below and subtract the full array. And then I'd ask, hey, which one is negative, and then put some number there. So inside let, I'm actually going to filter this array and remove the first row. That way I get from 6 to 41. So the variable is going to be called remove first row. I'm going to use filter on the comma position. And I'm going to use sequence counting comma position which delivers 1 to however many positions we have. And I want all of them greater than 1. So that filter result would look like this, missing the first row. The seventh variable I'm going to call pre-length array, because the next calculation is calculating the length of each number. I simply took remove first row, minus comma, position, minus 1. and. We can see what that gives us. There's an error that's our marker that that's the last one, but they're all four. Later when we change one of these, these will be dynamic. Now for the actual length, we'll take is and a of that array, and there's only one of them, so that's the last one. And I'm going to put some big number. I know that none of the numbers are ever going to be longer than five, so that will work. Otherwise, the pre-length array, which has everything except for that error at the end. So now as a length variable, that's what it looks like. Now we have the two arrays we need, start position and length. The ninth variable extract, we do mid of the cell. There's the comma positions lengths. And that'll give us numbers. And we simply add. And it shouldn't be that cell reference. It should be that one. And so now let's see what extract gives us. There's our numbers. The tenth variable final. And there's the calculation. We're simply joining them. And now we'll see if this works. Boom, there it is. Now I can double click on let and send it down. And this one 
if I change the length, that is working perfectly. All right, I'll throw it back to Mr. Excel. Hey, Mike, thanks for the shout out, trying to get those 100,000 subscribers. And anyone on my channel, I'm sure you're already subscribed to Excel is Fun, but if not, please subscribe to Mike's channel. He's been around almost as long as I have and has just an amazing number of videos every month coming out with more and more and more. So hey, thanks to all of you who can subscribe. Uh, we both appreciate it. In fact, give all of our friends down there a uh, subscribe on that. Mike, you completely surprised me here. I teed this one up for you. I, I used VBA. I was sure you're going to use, use Power Query. I have a Power Query way, and I'm sure you have a better Power Query way. So hey, next Friday, let's come back and solve this exact same problem, but with Power Query. Uh, your first formula down here actually answers the problem the way that it was described, but you're right. Sivo is probably just simplifying the question for us, and they won't really be in sequence. Uh, but I, I love this formula here. The formula up here uh, actually makes my head spin. I had to go take some uh, Tylenol after that one. Uh, crazy, crazy. I actually feel bad. I feel bad sending you this question. I figured it'd be you know a few minutes in Power Query. Uh, that had to take a couple of days uh, to figure out. So my complete respect uh, to you for that awesome formula. Um, hoorah. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel. And Excel is fun. Bye -bye. It's Dueling Excel time.